Hello friends, welcome back to another video on C-Sharp collection series. In this video, we will learn the very important interface that almost all our collection uses. That's I enumerable and I enumerator. I will try to answer questions like, how does our collection leverages these interfaces to iterate? How can we make our class iterate like in normal collections like list or array? And in next video, we will see how iEnumerable can help you to write efficient code in certain scenarios. But before that, if you have not subscribed the channel, then consider subscribing it for all the exciting videos on C and other technologies. Okay, so without wasting any time, let's get started. We have many collections in .NET framework, right? Like array, list, dictionaries. And we can iterate through all these using loop like for each. Have you ever thought what enables for each loop to do this? Let me explain this. For this, let's create a list of a string. Let's add few items to it. Let's iterate and display each item for each name in LST names name. Let's run this. So we get the names John, Martin and Tom. Now if I ask you, how did it display the list items? Your answer might be that the for each loop is looping through the list items and has displayed the list content one after the other. No doubt that's the correct answer. But do you know how did for each loop pick these items one after the other from the list? That's where iEnumerable comes into picture. This is the interface that essentially determines what you can and cannot use with the for each loop. To be specific, for each internally uses methods exposed by iEnumerable to enumerate. Let's get into little detail. Every collection in C-Sharp implements iEnumerable interface. Let's check that. List. Let's go to its definition. See, that's iEnumerable implemented here. Let me go to its definition. It has only one method, getEnumerator, that returns iEnumerator. Now let's go to its definition and check because this is where all the magic happens. It contains three things. Current, which is the current item in the collection. Then there is a method called move next that moves the pointer to the next item in the collection. And there is a reset method, which resets the position of the enumerator. So basically your for each loop calls the get enumerator method of enumerable interface which then returns the iNumerator of that collection. And then it calls the moveNext method that basically moves the pointer to the first item of the collection. And that item will be then referenced by the current object. And then for each iteration of the for each loop, the moveNext method will be called and then it goes to the next item in the collection, which will be referenced by current. And it keeps doing that until the last item in the collection. Now to demonstrate how this iEnumerator works internally, let me display the data directly using the methods of iEnumerator. iEnumerator manually var enumerator lst names dot get enumerator. First we have to move the pointer to first item, right? So var move one equal to enumerator dot move next. Then get the first item, first item equal to enumerator dot current. Again move to next item, get the currently referenced item. Similarly, let's get the third item of the list. Let's print them all. Let me debug and show you now. So we have the enumerator here, moving the pointer to first item, 
See, we have the first item here. Then our pointer moves to the next item, gets the second item, and similarly it gets the third item. You can see here we have the same output as we got using for each loop. You can of course reduce these lines of code using a loop. Let me quickly write a while loop to achieve the same. Using a while loop while enumerator dot move next print current item so enumerator dot current item let's run see we get the same output so i hope it is clear how for each loop internally leverages i enumerator to enumerate it means for each loop internally calls these methods to move to next item and to get the current item in fact, almost all loops work similar to this. Now let's see how we can implement this interface and make our own custom class enumerable. Let me create a class called student. So this is a simple class with just two properties. Now let me create another class student list. Let me create an array of student inside this. Let's create a constructor and add few student to this array. Now what I want is this. I want to instantiate this student list class. In fact, let's instantiate this. And I want to loop through this class using for each loop. It means this class should behave like a collection. So I should be able to write something like this. For each student s in student list console dot write line s dot name s dot edge. Right now it shows a compile time error. Any idea why? That's because our student list class does not implement i enumerable and i enumerator. Let's implement them. So we get get enumerator method that returns our enumerator. Here we are implementing enumerator in the same class, but you can of course create a separate class as well. Let's implement it. So we get one property and two methods. First of all, let's implement get enumerator method. So what it should return? It should return our enumerator. In this case, since we have implemented the enumerator in the same class, so convert this class instance to type i enumerator and return. Now we have to implement our enumerator methods. Let's create the private field position and initialize it with minus one. So what move next should do? It should move the current position by one, right? So position plus plus. And it should increment till we reach the end of our internal array. Now current should return the item in the current position. And reset should set the position back to zero. That's it. Now let's go up. See, our for each loop is not showing any error now. That's because we have implemented i enumerable and i enumerator to our student list class. Actually, this is how the for each loop leverages interfaces implemented in the collections like list and dictionaries to enumerate. It means your collection class like list and dictionaries has similar implementations like ours class. Let's run this and see if it all works fine. Perfect. 
it displays the expected output. I hope you have now fair idea about iNumerable and iNumerator and why these interfaces are so important. Mostly we do not use this interface directly in our code. But there are scenarios where using this interface can make our code efficient. Check out that in my next video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in your comments for all the future videos on C-Sharp and other technologies. Thanks.